Hey look, it's another box from GearBest, which can only mean one thing. Time to review another 3D printer. And that means that I have to build up this kit and... Here you go, dude. Who are you? Well, I'm you from the future. I already did all the hard work of making this thing. I even uh, did a little modification to the Y-axis limit switch. But that's not how this works. I have to show them the time lapse of putting it together and talk about the components and... Fine, suit yourself. Don't be like that. This is looking good. We've got uh, an enclosed power supply, all metal components, nice nylon uh, pulleys for riding in the v groove extrusions. This is looking pretty promising. Let's see what it looks like when it's fully built. I have followed the instructions and built the printer up the way that they told me to do it, but as is almost always the case with these inexpensive uh, printers coming out of China, uh, they get you 90% of the way there, but the last 10% is up to you. So there's a few problems with the printer as it currently sits. First, let's take a look at this uh, Y-axis switch. Here's the limit switch, right? Now if I slide that table back, we see it triggers the switch right there. Did you hear it? I mean, I can't even force the bed back any farther than that. But look at my, look at where the, uh, the nozzle sits. It's a long way to the front of that bed. Um, now there is quite a recess under there uh, in the sub bed, in this plate underneath there. There's a, a large recess inside there on the other side. So I think that this is meant to go there. So I have to switch everything around and put that over there and hope that it works. This is so funny, you guys. Look at this cover uh, over the electronics. It looks like bent aluminum, right? But it's plastic. Like, why would you make it like this? That's so much more, uh, you know, labor to, to bend that plastic like you're bending aluminum. You should three, or you should just injection mold this. Uh, the only reason to make it like this is so that you can fool your customers. They think they're buying metal, but they're buying plastic. I mean, not that it matters. It's just the cover to the electronics, but still, it's, it's the principle. Looking at the control board here, it's really very clean. There's a small little 40 millimeter part cooling fan up here at the top, and they've done a good job cramming everything into a very small case. Um, unfortunately, the chip is my uh, least favorite, the 1284 chip, and the, uh, the stepper drivers are the old standby 4988s. So nothing fancy, really just sort of your bottom of the, bottom of the line components that are tried and true. They definitely work to run 3D printers, but nothing fancy there. Also, there aren't uh, really very many pins that I can see available to do other things. Um, and I can't find any printing on this board that tells me what it is. So um, I'm gonna say that the upgradability on this thing is pretty poor just because I don't know if there's even pins available like to plug in a sensor to do mesh bed leveling or to plug in your fan for part cooling fan. Now this USB uh, port right here, as well as this USB jumper here in the back, uh, both those things suggest that you could flash the firmware, which is better than the Creality CR10 where you have to get a, an external little uh, dongle to plug into that 
uh, board in order to, to program it. It might be the same case here though, I don't know. I mean, that seems to be Creality's MO and this is another Creality printer. Looking at the back side of that screen, it's just a miniature version of the RepRap discount full graphics display. Um, pixel for pixel, exactly the same, just that the pixel size uh, is smaller. So every pixel is just like half the size on this uh, display. But uh, I'm gonna have to, when I give it the final points, I'm gonna have to give it um, you know, the same points that I would give a RepRap discount full graphics display, just because it is so clean having those smaller pixels and it does convey all the information that the larger screen conveys. The other major problem with this printer as it came is a little bit tough to see here through all the wires. Let me just unplug these in fact. There we go. Look at the angle on that uh, lead screw. You see how, see how angled the, uh, the stepper motor the, the flexible coupling is. Now that's being caused by the angle of this bracket which is leaned down, but it's being compounded by the fact that the stepper motor is leaned up. So the stepper motor uh, is sitting on this lower 20, what is that, 20, 2020 extrusion. So there's a 2020 extrusion going away from the camera there, but there's also this 24 extrusion that I'm holding on to right here, which dives down and those two don't perfectly match up. So the stepper motor is being held off which is tipping the stepper motor forward. And then that has been bent too far, which is tipping it down. But yeah, once that's straight, everything should work well. As it currently sits, it's very difficult to spin that uh, lead screw. And I don't think that, that, you see how short that stepper motor is? And I highly doubt it's gonna have enough grunt, enough torque to, uh, to move that lead screw currently. When I move the, uh, the stepper motor up so that it no longer touches the 2020 extrusion, um, it, it straightens out the stepper motor quite a bit, which alleviates our problem. Um, but now I can't spin that down any lower because we're getting a collision between that mounting bracket and that bracket there for the Z axis. That's not the only problem though. We can still see quite an angle on that um, stepper. And it appears that this T-nut isn't completely lined up. Either the T-nut is slid to the outside there or it's angled this way. I can't decide which. So what I'm gonna to try to do is stick a washer in between this uh, mounting bracket for the stepper motor and see if that solves both my problems there. So I put some one millimeter thick washers back there between the bracket and the 2040 rail and they spaced it off sufficiently so that the stepper motor now sits straight. But we still have the problem coming from the orientation of that T-nut. So that's where the lead nut currently wants to sit naturally, is right there. Now I can force it over there and get it in the hole, but that's, it's not good. We don't wanna force it, we wanna be lined up. And I could either try to shim the T-nut, or I can just bend this metal. And I can use these two crescent wrenches to just sort of gently persuade that metal to go in the direction that I need it to. Perfect, check this out. When I cycle this thing around its limits, we can see that it's circling the hole almost perfectly. It'll sit in there nicely and we should have very little friction in the system. And that's how it's supposed to work. See how easy that is? That'll print really well. As it turns out, I cannot mount the original bracket here uh, on the inside because it collides with the bracket that holds the Y-axis stepper motor uh, to the rail. So we can only go back so far and that doesn't allow enough uh, movement to the back. So instead, I came up with this uh, bracket here which I printed in ABS, you guys, just like it sits with the aluminum bed, just put some glue stick down and printed that bracket up. Uh, so that solves the problem nicely. You can see we can slide that bed all the way back now and the nozzle is right in line uh, with the very front of the bed. I printed that bracket with this Sunlu filament. This is an ABS material that I got uh, from Gearbest as well. And it prints just buttery smooth on this printer, which is super impressive because this is the first printer I've had that prints with such good results with ABS straight out of the box. All of these printers print with PLA. It's the easiest plastic to print with. I've never had any real problems with that material, but uh, almost none of them will print with ABS without it modifying them. And this one, no modifications needed, just works. And the fact that it doesn't have a cooling fan doesn't hurt it for ABS because you don't want cooling on ABS. So really, this is an ABS printer, which is phenomenal because ABS is the lowest cost way to make high strength plastic parts. 
remember that PLA will like melt on the dashboard of your car and you know, it's biodegradable, that's nice, but it's, it's really an inferior product to ABS as far as strength and longevity and durability and all of that goes. Here we can see that I've already done two test prints uh, with this PLA filament that came with the machine as well as some other white filament because I just wanted to see if that filament was giving an advantage to the machine. Uh, we'll talk about these here in a minute. Just for the sake of experimentation, I'm gonna do a test print with ABS. So that just got up to temperature in less than five minutes and the thermistor underneath there thinks that it's at 99 degrees. Thermometer says 96, pretty good. I use this glue stick when the bed's hot and it sort of cooks it right as it puts it down. So the ABS is sticking really well to that sort of baked on uh, glue stick. And unfortunately, you can't just use the aluminum bed the whole time because there's these countersunk holes for the screws. Um, so we'll need to put a bed on top of that, which is what this thing uh, came for. But I don't wanna use this just yet because what I wanna do is put a flexible bed up on top of there. And I'll just attach that with binder clips, the old binder clip trick. And I'm gonna put this on top of my flexible bed. So it should be a really nice bed solution in the end. But this is gonna to take too long to watch it print, so let me just snap my fingers and it'll all be finished. Oh, ABS, you stupid fickle plastic. <laughs> uh, can you guys see the, uh, the peeling, peeled up off the bed? Uh, I really should be using this uh, print surface which came with the printer. I probably wouldn't have had that problem. Um, but you know, I'm saving this because I have a piece of Gerolite on order to fit this bed. And I don't want to use this on the aluminum when I want to put this on top of the Gerolite. So anyway, let's take a look at these uh, three test prints and then we will give the printer a numerical score and that'll be the end of it. So this was the first test print and I did this using the PLA that came with the printer, that little sample spool. And look at that spire, so good for not having any part cooling. The thing is that in Kira, I just used the profile for the uh, Creality CR10S. That's just the stock profile. All, all I did was change the bed size. And that program automatically had a minimum layer time of 10 seconds built into it. So that had the, uh, the, the thing where the print nozzle moves off the uh, spire, lets the spire cool down and goes back and prints if it takes less than 10 seconds to print the whole layer. So that's why that spire is so clean. Well, I also thought that maybe this was just some really good PLA filament. So I went back to that uh, sample filament that came with the GTEC E180 because that thing really didn't uh, have a good sample print. So I didn't want to give this printer uh, any advantages. So I decided to use the, the filament that had the worst sample print. And yeah, I also took off that, that delay time, the minimum layer time. And we can see that no part cooling really does have an adverse effect on uh, print quality when it comes to tall skinny spires. So uh, yeah, that's to be expected. Really not bad though on the drooping of the ceiling. Uh, looks pretty good. Um, here is the ABS print. We can see some pretty severe drooping in the ceiling. There's these uh, stringies that we can just sort of get rid of, I guess, I don't know. You could clean this up. The great thing about ABS is that it is very machinable. You can cut on it with a knife and things come apart quite well. So uh, also we have that, that warping. So you can see I can rock this thing back and forth on the table. Um, so hmm, is what it is. But hey, ABS straight out of the box. And this I would say is an ABS printer. That's what this printer was designed to do and it, it, does, it, it does it well. And finally, let's give this thing a point score. So go ahead and pause the video if you wanna see point for point where it earned its marks. Um, but the bottom line is that this thing scored a phenomenal 59 points. I did not expect that. I thought it was just gonna be uh, in line with the X1, the Troncy X1. Um, so it earned its points primarily because of that bed heater that heats up because it's so small, it heats up in under five minutes so you can print in ABS. So. Um, you can compare and see point for point where it gained and lost some. Like for instance, print area, it only earned a one where the Creality earned a three. But uh, you know, time to heat up, it earned a three where the Creality earned a one. So that's a wash, right? That's a trade-off. I gave it an extra point on the spool holder just because it's a really good integrated spool holder design. 
the fact that it's mounted on the top of that frame like that uh, is really clean. So earned it an extra point. The most value here buying this printer and also a very high score. Unfortunately, very difficult to upgrade it, but you know what? You don't need to. You don't need mesh bed loving because the bed is so small. You're gonna get your prints to stick. And uh, the part cooling fan, that would be a nice to have. But I've shown you how with Kira you can just do the minimum uh, layer time and you should be okay. And there you have it, the Creality Ender 2. Uh, think of it as the little brother to the CR10, and it is a surprisingly great little printer. I did one other modification to it that I didn't show you guys, and that is I moved the X limit switch about seven millimeters that way so that I've got full use of that bed. The bed, by the way, is 165 millimeters in X and Y, and the print volume goes up to about 200 millimeters. So should be sufficient volume for most 3D printed projects. If you wanna purchase this printer, there will be a link in the description down below to the GearBest listing. Be a smart shopper, shop around. It doesn't help me if you purchase from that link. GearBest sent me this printer for free and I made a video for them and our relationship ends there. So uh, do your diligence and see if you can get it cheaper elsewhere. So now I have to take this thing to my past self and save him two days worth of making a review video about it. Um, so I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.